Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the October November 2022 International A Level or Cambridge Pure One Pure Mathematics One. This is a nine seven zero nine. So it's paper one variant two, paper one two, and this is question seven also from my end of topic worksheet on trigonometry from Cambridge P1. And here we're asked first to prove this identity, um, sine theta over sine theta plus cosine theta plus cosine theta over sine theta minus sine th cosine theta is identical to tan squared theta plus one over tan squared theta minus one. So we're gonna start off here um, on the left side, which normally is a sensible thing to do, but sometimes you can do both. Um, in fact, most times you can do both. But normally this would be the sensible thing to do in most cases. Okay, so we'll start off with the left-hand side. And basically what we have to do is we have to show how these, when you manipulate them algebraically, these two fractions together, they will simplify to give us something that's exactly like this through a series of algebraic manipulations. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to see that we have one term and we're starting with two separate terms. So normally when you see something like that, you have, you, you've you got two separate terms and you want to end up with one term. You normally try to add these two terms together. So we have two fractions that we're going to add together. And um, the common factor of these two fractions is basically sine theta plus cosine theta times sine theta minus cosine theta. Right. So I'm going to, you know, do the whole proper method first and then I'll show you a shortcut. But basically what we'll do is I'm going to make the common dem denominator, denominator, sorry, of sine theta plus cosine theta and sine theta minus cosine theta. Let me get rid of this numerator first. Okay, and this this will also be have that same denominator, which is sine theta minus cosine theta times sine theta plus cosine theta. So basically multiplied um, this denominator by sine theta minus cosine theta. So therefore I have to multiply the numerator also by sine theta minus cosine theta. So now I've multiplied this fraction uh, by the same thing on the top and bottom. And, you know, same thing here. I have to multiply this by sine theta plus cosine theta. So I'll take cosine theta times sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay, so now what we'll notice is that um, you'll end up here with the same thing in the denominator. So I can write it as one common denominator of sine theta minus cosine theta. Sine theta, we could say plus cosine theta, same thing, but then the other one should be sine theta minus cosine theta. Okay, so we have the same common denominator and I can just add together these numerators as sine theta times sine theta minus cosine theta plus cosine theta times sine theta plus cosine theta. Now. What we could have actually done is gone from here to here in one step. Okay, but I wanted to show you exactly what's happening. Some people just memorize, oh, you multiply these two together, then you multiply this with this and that one with that. And that's exactly what's happened here. But I like people to understand the reasoning behind this. You see, what it is what we're actually doing is we're doing this. We are making them, we're adding two fractions together by making the denominators the same. Okay, so we, um, we find the LCM of the denominators, express them as that denominator and then multiply the numerator of each one by what would be make it into an equivalent fraction to what it was there. So we had to multiply this by sine theta minus cosine theta. So I multiply the numerator by the same thing and the same for this fraction. I have to multiply the denominator by sine theta plus cosine theta. So I multiply the numerator by the same thing. Okay, so you end up getting something like this. Now, if you were to just go from here to here, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to write this step down, but I liked for the students to understand why uh, we do what we do. Okay, so that's why I prefer to show that step at this stage so you understand what's happening. So now, what I'm going to do is simplify this. So this is the same as this. And now this is going to be sine theta times sine theta, which is sine squared theta. Remember, sine theta all squared is the same as sine squared theta. They mean the same thing. And then sine theta times minus cosine theta is minus sine theta, cosine theta. Then you have cosine theta times sine theta, which is plus... And again, that's going to be basically, I'll write it like this, but it's the same as sine theta, cosine theta, of course, they're the same thing. Okay, and then cosine theta times cosine theta is 
cosine squared theta all over and now I can rewrite this um, because it's like a difference of squares if I expand that the middle term will disappear I'm left with sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta always keep in mind what we have to show in the end we have to show this in the end tan squared theta plus one over tan squared theta minus one okay so instead of scrolling up all the time I've just written here this should be our final answer that should be what this simplifies to. Now, um, a lot of people will realize here, hey, that's fine. You can These two will cancel out because they're the same thing, plus minus. So we're left now with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. And I think most of the students who did this question, they got this far and they didn't know how to get to this step here, okay? And this is something where you have to do a little bit of thinking, all right? And it's actually quite simple, but see, the natural kind of instinct for somebody now would be to use the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And they'll write this as 1 over sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. And then after this, they start getting a bit lost. How do I make this become that? How do I make this become that? That's where they start getting lost. Okay, they're not sure what to do next. All right. Um, now, if we had the knowledge of P three, we would have be able to um, we would be able to do the same thing. Following, um, you know, we could do this and then get to the answer quite easily. Okay, um, but we don't know some of the identities of what are called the reciprocal trig functions. So, for you guys doing P one, it wouldn't be a good idea to write this down. Okay, although most of you would have written this down. So if you, if you get to a stage like that and you can't go any further, then what you should do is, all right, let's go back to an, a step before now. What you have to notice here is one thing you realize is there should be, um, in this place, you need to have tan squared theta. Here you're supposed to have tan squared theta. Here you're supposed to have plus one. And here you're supposed to have minus one. So if you think about it, what makes tan squared theta, what makes sine squared theta into tan squared theta? Well, if you divide it by cosine squared theta. Same thing with, if you divide cosine squared theta by cosine squared theta, it gives you one. So if I just take the whole of this numerator and divide all of it by cosine squared theta, and I do the same to the denominator, so I haven't changed the fraction, I've gonna, I'm going to be able to have this form. So let me just write this. So you have sine squared theta, I'm going to divide this by cosine squared theta and also every term by cosine squared theta, basically. Okay, it's like I multiply the whole of the numerator by cosine squared theta. And then I got my denominator. I have sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. And that gives us what we're looking for. That gives us our answer in the end. That will give us tan squared theta plus one over tan squared theta minus one and we've got the answer that we're searching for there and that's it that's the answer okay so we've, we've, we've completed it right so it's a bit of a i mean from this stage a lot of people would get lost they would write one over sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta and they wouldn't know what to do next but this is basically for you guys doing p1 um, you can just think over here, hold on, let's see, I need this to be tan squared theta, I need this all to be tan theta squared theta. That will be achieved by dividing by cosine squared theta, and these will become one with the same thing. So you're dividing the whole of the numerator and the whole of the denominator by cosine squared theta, so you haven't changed the value of the fraction. It's perfectly fine to do that, and you've got your answer. Okay, so there's part A. Um, I think that's most of uh, where people got stuck on in this question. Um, and, uh, you know, th th there was a problem after this stage here. Now for part B. Here we're told that we have to use our answer from part A to solve or to find the exact solutions of this equation. So first of all, hence means using what we did earlier. So we've already proved that this expression is equal to tan squared theta plus 1 over tan squared theta minus 1. So we've already proved this in the first part. So we can replace this with that first. So we can write, instead of writing uh, tan squared theta plus, uh, instead of writing this sine theta over sine plus sine theta plus cosine theta, etc., we can just write, instead of that, 
uh, tan squared theta plus 1 over tan squared theta minus 1 is equal to 2. We can replace all of this with, with that, and then we can solve this equation for theta between 0 and pi. Now, one of the things that we should also notice here in this question is that they said find the exact solutions. That means our answers will be in terms of pi, will be in terms of decimals. Okay, so we're doing, dealing with radians here, so it's going to be exact answers, not decimal answers. That's the other thing we should keep in mind. All right, so next, what we have to do is solve this equation, basically. In order for us to solve this equation, we have to kind of manipulate it, rearrange it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by tan squared theta minus 1 to get rid of that, um, that fraction. So it'll be 2 times tan squared theta minus 1. And when we expand that, we have tan squared theta plus 1 on this side is equal to 2 tan squared theta minus 2. Now, if I subtract tan squared theta from both sides, that's going to give me uh, 1 tan squared theta. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to get minus 3 equals 0. So I, I end up with tan squared theta is equal to 3. So tan of theta is equal to the positive or negative root of 3. Now, what people will forget to do here is consider the negative root 3. Don't forget when you take the square root, if tan squared theta equals 3, then tan theta could either have been 3 or could have been negative 3. So don't forget that. So that will leave us with, um, you know, two sets of answers. We have tan theta equals root 3, and we've got to also can consider tan theta equals negative root 3. Now, if we know our triangles, we can do this without the calculator, which is not actually necessary, but it's a good idea to know it. So we know that this is uh, 60 degrees, which is... Um, and this is 30 degrees, this is 2, this is 1, this is a right angle, this is root 3. So remember, 60 degrees is pi over 6, pi over 3, sorry, and 30 degrees is pi over 3. So if we look at tan of theta, it's opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be root 3 over 1, so that's pi over 3. So this is going to give us the answer of pi over 3. And um, we know that, I mean, if you want to use a calculator, we can use a calculator for that, and we can say, inverse tan of make sure in radian mode which we are of root 3 and that gives us that gives us pi over 3 okay now the the other solutions because we're only going between 0 and pi that's the only solution if we think about the tan curve and how it looks okay it looks like this between this is 0 and this is pi over 2 and then up to pi again, it's over there. All right, so it looks like this. In the region that we're looking at, there's only one solution, which is pi over 3. If I add pi to this, it takes out us past pi, of course. Subtract pi from this, it takes us below 0. So that's the only solution for this part. For that part, when we put this in our calculator, what we're going to get is negative pi over 3, as you'll see. If I make this inverse tan of negative pi over 3, I get negative, sorry, negative root 3, I get negative pi over 3. That gives me negative pi over 3, which is over here. As you see, that's not one of our solutions. However, if we add pi to that, we'll end up with a solution in our range. So our solution is going to be negative pi over 3, and you add pi to that, that gives you, uh, add pi to that gives you 2 pi over 3. Because this is negative pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. So our exact answers are theta equals pi over 3. Let me write it a bit neat. It looks like a 2 there. And then pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Both of those answers are with, within our range. And that solves this answer. And we can also do this using the cast diagram like some people prefer. So the first solution we got with our calculator was this solution. And the second solution we got with our calculator was this solution over here. Okay, because the first solution was when tan was positive. So it gave us this answer over here, which is pi over 3. And we know that the only solution, that's the only solution between 0 and pi for that. And for the second one, let me just change the color so it's a bit clearer. The second one, it gave us a solution over here. Okay, that gave us minus pi over 3. So the other place where it shares the same the tan ratio, but it's of negative, but it's between 0 and pi is over here, which is going to be this angle over here, which is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so there's the answer to this question number seven.
from the end of topic worksheet and also number seven from this October, November 2022 paper. Um, I hope that was clear. And um, other questions from this particular November, October, November 2022, when I get to answer them and upload them, they will be in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions from this particular worksheet, end of topic worksheet number 10 from trigonometry, it will be in the playlist over here. Questions in general from P1 of Cambridge Trigonometry at Excel questions, um, sorry, um, A-level questions you can find from this um, link over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.